Yay, we've got audio. Okay, good. Now the microphone's nice and hot again. Background music should be cruising, nice and cool. And we don't have any guest audio because we don't have any guests. All right. Hey, hey everybody. Welcome back. I'm Ajo Neal. We're going to continue on with this little uh, long venture into rewriting all of the Dash Wallet tools to be in modern JavaScript in the browser is self-contained individual tools. Okay, so what we're at here is basically I'm just going to need to create a raw transaction and broadcast it. And uh, just like I've done before, load up some keys with a tiny amount of Dash and then just publish them off um, into the ether because I think we're, we're pretty much done. I did get the hashing the, or the signing to work. Oh no, oh, we're, there's a little bit left to do. Okay, so I have to, now that I've got the signing to work, which I don't know for sure that it worked because there's a random component to the signature and so I'm gonna have to broadcast the message to find out if it works. I'm not, I won't, I won't be, I'll be thrilled if it does work on the first try, but I won't um, go cry in a corner if it doesn't, but uh, we'll see how it works out. Anyway, before we get started on that, a quick word from our not, not a sponsor, Mr. Mountain Dew. Pop top, my friends, for it is time for us to open focus. Mm, sip greatness. And that's my wife in the background snortling because uh, she thinks that my my goofiness is goofy. Well, joke's on her because she married me. All right. Anyway. So uh, the wh where I left things off last time was that the signature was complaining about a missing... Um, what was it? It's talking about. Oh man, there's all this stuff in my history that from the last project I was working on. Um. Okay, here we are. So, it was it, it was missing a create HMAC function because the way that the transpiler transpiled this code, it was supposed to make it, it seems like it was supposed to make it so that it could work for Node or for the browser, but it put in stubs that made it detect as though it can work for Node, but then just throws exceptions instead. So it looks, it seems kind of weird because it could have just set the Node thing false, but when it actually runs because of all the machinery, the Node, is this Node th thing, gets set to true when it runs a node, which kind of makes sense, except now the stubs are there. So I had to put in this uh, HMAX SHA-256. And then of course, now that we've hit node V18, there's no difference between, there doesn't have to be any difference between node and browser crypto. So uh, here I am just using browser crypto in node because it landed, huzzah. Anyway. So th this was the missing piece from last time. And, uh, oh, I do have the chat open, so hello, and uh, feel free to drop me a line, and I'll try to check in on that occasionally. Um, but, and, and I think, and I did trace it around a little bit, because this function isn't actually used when you do the signatures, except that it seeds, uh, like I was talking about with that, um, seeding the signature, it seeds the signature. Or it seeds some random bytes, put the signature in there. It takes the random bytes and then it hashes them to, I guess, I don't know why you do that. I guess the idea is to, to make it more random or, or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, probably, it probably does provide a degree of protection because when you're dealing with JIT compiled languages like JavaScript, there are some sort of optimizations that leak information. And so if you just use the random number generator, it may not end up being as random as it ought to be. I don't know how that's even possible because it should be sourcing it from the operating system's random number generator. But then I think that maybe passing it through the hash causes it to not get cached 
because then you won't be using it a second time. The next time you use it, you'll be using the hash of it rather than the thing itself. I don't exactly, um, I don't exactly know what what it is, but I, I there's some reason that it, that it hashes it rather than just using the random number. But I think it, it hashes the seed, and then when it generates the private key, actually that might be the part where that actually might be the part where it came from. Uh, let me see if I can get there. No, nope, it's not that one. I think it is this one. Okay, so it may not have been the signing function. It might have been the random private key function because I saw that that hashes uh, the random bytes. Anyway, so here we are. This should be the signable transaction and this should be the signature. So let me go ahead and log that out. Okay, so signable transaction, and then this is the signature. And I thought, hold on. Mm, hex to U8. I think we need to go the other way around on this one. Uh, I'm a little confused, to be honest. Let's try this. Console.log sig. And then sig. Let's see what happens there. Sig. Okay, there's the signature. Okay, and is it are we getting the same signature every time? I wouldn't be surprised if we're not, um, just on the basis of the way that that hex to u8 function works. It probably messed up some stuff. But if we're I'm hoping that we're lucky and that if we were to use the same private key, we would actually get back. So this is what we should do here. Um what I, what I need to do is I need to go from, for the si purposes of signing, I need to go from um, a private key that I already have pre-stored. So let's do this. We're going to do, oops, not that one. <sighs> okay. So the private key... We should be able to take that to hex. And then we need something that goes the opposite way as well. So hex to u8. All right, and then to do output u8 instead of hex. I think that makes sense for the signable. Because basically the only reason you want a signable transaction is because you want to sign it. And a U8 is going to be more useful for that use case. Okay. And we need we need the inverse function. We need the... I don't know if we need it for anything else. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of not having anything that we don't need. So I'm just going to throw this in here for now this is a jarbled mess we'll have to make this less ugly um, later but let's do u8 to hex and then we're gonna do the same thing here so this will be u8 <sighs> And then we're going to do let um, x equals this. Oh, did we reverse see this? I think about that. Oh, no. No, no, no. Okay. So we're just going to call u8 dot for each function. This is going to be a byte. And we're gonna do hex dot push. I'm pretty sure we already have this in there. Um, let h. Oops. Let h equals b dot to string sixteen dot pad start to zero. And then we're gonna push the hex on, and then we're gonna return hex dot join. Nah. Okay. That's it. Much simpler. 
to go this direction than the other direction. All right, so there's our, actually, so this takes in the U8 array as U8 and then at returns string hex. Okay, of course, I have to tell it that it's an array of string as its type. Okay. Oh, it doesn't exist. Yeah, we can just ignore that for now. That may come in handy later, so we might keep it. Might keep it, might not. So there's private key that's going to pop out. Let's see. Oh, that came out as a UN8 array, which is not what I was expecting. Hex to U8, private key. Hmm. All right, I'm a little confused. Hex to U8. Oh, that's right. Got it. Because we need the opposite. We need to go u8 to hex on this one. Okay, u8 to hex. And then... Oops. Dang it, I keep on going too fast here for my own good. Alright, so we don't want a random private key. We want... Let priv key equals tx.utils dot x2 u8 okay, let's do let priv key hex equals priv key and you could actually take this key and you could encode it either way well you could you could encode this for any um any any currency it's it's currency agnostic in this form I could take that, I could turn it into a dash address, Bitcoin address, whatever. Okay. And then we can sign. And what I want to check and see is if we get the same signature every time or if we get a different signature, signature every time. I'm thinking we're going to get a different signature every time. Actually, it looks like we're getting the same signature every time. That makes me happy. That makes it a lot easier to test. It's slightly potentially off spec because it's not actually using the random twiddly bit in the signature. But, it, yeah, makes testing a lot easier when you get the same thing every time. Okay, so from here, we need to do the same thing again with this. Uh, okay, it looks like we will need this because we're going to need to take signatures and turn them into hex. U8 tax. Okay, so signature looks the same every time. Okay, good. And, oh, wait a minute. Is this in the right format? 30, 45, 02, 21. Okay, 30, 45, 02, 21. So this is saying that this is a sequence type that's of length 45 the sequence type is byte or the I, the element type is byte length 21 and then if we go along we should see here sequence type the next element in the sequence is of type byte of length 20 but what okay so we are missing something here uh, which is the I think the compression specifier. I'm gonna have to have to think on this for a second. Hmm. Because if you recall, I don't know where we get this information from. 
But if you recall in our earlier shenanigans, actually, let me go into what was it? Like, test nine or something. Um, where we have the signature. Let's see, signed. Okay, that this one is the link. Three times more. Okay, so we don't need it on the signature, it looks like. It doesn't have the bite, the obnoxious bite. But we do need to calculate the public key for the private key. Because we're going to have to store the public key information right after. And the public key, ah, here we go. So this 01... No, O2, right here. So this O2 right here is the public key quadrant specifier. So let's go ahead and try to get the public key out of this thing because that's going to be the thing that has to be appended to the signature. The signature is going to be appended with public key. So we're going to have to take the private key and I'm going to go back to the documentation for this. And I'm sorry that at this point, oh, this stuff looks like crap. The, the code that we're working on is all just jumbled garbage nonsense. I mean, it's just test code, but... Um, okay, so back here... Public key. Get public key of private key. Of pub key. Right, we're going to try to get that public key and figure out what format it's in. We might have to move a byte from the back to the front or something like that. That's not uncommon with this stuff. All right, so let pub equals and then pub. I'm hoping it just comes out in the right format. I think I think it will. It's hard to remember all the different variations of these libraries that I've used. Okay, there's sig, and then there's pub, and this one starts with 04, so I think that's right. Uh, wait, we want the compressed public key. So it shouldn't start with 04, it should start with either 01 or 02. And in order to get the compressed public key, we need to uh, maybe put in compressed true, I don't remember what it was. I remember this actually tripped me up though. Get public key. Get public key. Private key. And there's some sort of option. Is compressed. Yeah. So this is actually the API here is wrong. Uh, I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a change to this document here. Uh, readme. Come on. I mean, take me to the readme. Public key. Okay, that one. Yeah, that's good. Recover public key. And I'm guessing that this one might have an is, is compressed as well. Oh, interesting. Oh, 
Okay, so this can output in multiple signature formats. I think this was supposed to be recover public key, wasn't it? Not get public key? Oh no, right here. Okay, so this is verify, get shared secret, recover, recover public key, and then it is compressed. Mm. And that one does not have an is compressed. Docs, clarify usage of is compressed. I don't know why it didn't give me the option to choose what I wanted the name of the patch to be. Normally it does that. Maybe it's because I, if I'd zoomed out or something, it would have done that. Okay. Um, it seems almost everything in the cryptocurrency space to be uh, nearly seems to be the, the primary use of sec p two fifty six k one uses compressed keys for payment addresses. Since the default is here, is to use uncompressed keys, and the uh, the high level documentation uh, can. Omits mention of this, it can be confusing. Um, lead to using usage of the library. I've added pressed to the high level description descriptions so that um, it's easier for a passerby cases. There we go. So this, I mean, I, I put in false here, but I think that that should be true, generally. I don't know why you'd want that to be defaulted to false. Okay, anyway, let's move on from that. Hey, what's up? Uh, Nano Mermid Laner. Yes. How goes the battle? Okay, so... Get public key. There we go. Oh, duh, I wouldn't need to. 
We can do that in the log there. Okay, let's take a look at that again. And then now, pub key starts with 02. This is expected. So the thing I said about the quadrant might be wrong, or maybe it is right, but it's still, it's, so you have both points, then you can tell exactly where it is. Because you still have, you can get 03, I'm pretty sure you can get 03 or 04 when you're using uncompressed keys. You can get 01 or 02 when you're using compressed keys. Do you, you, but we don't get 00. zero. Probably don't get 00 zero because it would be confusing with the big int thing. <laughs> I think we get 04. I don't remember exactly. Anyway. Now we get a nice short key instead of a Jagangus long key. All right, cool. So that is suitable to be put into the signature block. Okay, so now the next bit is we need to, we need to get this information back into the transaction at the right place. Hmm. So we basically, hmm. hmm. Okay, I see why, I see why in one of the libraries I don't think this is necessarily the, the best behavior, but in the other library, you can put in the private keys in any order and it will figure out which private key goes to which coin. Here, we need to map the private keys to the inputs directly. Otherwise, you'll sign with the wrong keys but i think this is okay i think this is this is preferable that, 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 that because this makes sense it's one to one rather than having some form of magic okay so with this i can take i have to construct a signature out of this so let me think on how i construct that signature let script sig equals and then we're gonna have sig is gonna be here somewhere. Um, so I think we should actually have sig hex. Yeah, so let sig hex equals sig hex there. And then we should have a pub hex. Let pub hex equals, okay. And then let me go look at that thing that I called test nine because it's got these in the right order already. Okay, so when we so we take the inputs. Oh, and then we have to take the ha the sig hash type as well. Which let me check and see where did we where did we use that? So there's the raw result. Okay, so let, I didn't label it as such, but we should. Sig hash type equals 01. Sig hash type. And then we're gonna need to put, I don't remember exactly where sig hash type goes. I think it actually goes up towards the start. So our sig script is going to be Where's our inputs? Okay, inputs. This is the raw, this is the signed. So for our input, we're going to need, okay, we're gonna have, uh, this is sig hash type, and this is the public key. So we're gonna take the bytes in the public key, which is gonna be 21 or 22. I think it could, could it be higher than 22? I don't think it'd be higher than 22. I think it has to be either 20, 21 or 22. Okay, so um, technically, I guess we could, can we var int this? We can var int it if we want. 
but we're going to have let pub key size equals pub hex dot length divided by two. That's always going to be even. And so we will have okay, pub key size sig hash type comes before pub key size, and then we have pub hex. Okay, and then before that, this, I don't think that any of this is counted as part of the sig hex. So then we have uh, let, let sig size is going to be, and then we take the script, I think it's gonna be the whole thing. Uh, there's a couple different layers here. So sig size, is going to be sig hex dot length divided by two. And then sig size is going to be in here. Let's take a look. Okay, so there's sig script size, then there's sig size, then there's the signature, then there's the sig hash type, which I think the sig size includes sig hash type then there's the pub key size and there's the pub key if i remember this correctly and then we take all of that and that's the sig script size so let's break this down and see if it makes sense all right so sig size sig hex sig hash type Pub key size. Okay, but sig size should actually be this plus sig hash type dot length divided by two. Okay, and I'm doing this divided by two rather than just saying plus one, because this is not variable length, whereas the signature could be variable by one up to, actually I think it'd be variable up to two bytes. The pub key can be variable up to one byte. Sig hash type has no variability, but this is for documentation purposes. That it is first the signature and then the sig hash type can pose the sig size, and then sig script size is sig size plus pub key size and that makes the sig script the sig script is the signature the all the size information the signature the hash type and the public key So I'm not actually sure if this, if I'm not, I don't, is it the right way to say this, to put that in there? Okay, so this right here, that is the sig script. Okay, let's console.log that. Or let's call it sig script actually. Sig script, the signature script. Boom. I need to bring, well, I need to move something around real quick. Because if I don't have my chat a little bit closer, then I don't notice when people are saying hello. There we go. Because this is outside of my peripheral vision, that's inside my peripheral vision. Okay, so let us break this down. Signable sig pub. And then this is the six, uh, something got messed up there. All right, sig script. So this is already, this is wrong. That's absolutely wrong. Uh, what happened here? Sig script size, sig script size, sig size plus, um, did we do, it's not length. Oh, two string, 16. Uh, let's see, I think I can do tx.utils.2 var int. I think that's good enough. Yeah, okay. 
Okay, that looks a lot better. 69 makes sense. That's in the right realm. That'd be, that's pretty short, but let's see. Then we've got 72, and this is 22, and then we've got, no, this is 21, and then we got 20. So we don't have the full number of bytes that we could have there. And then, let's see, at some point, we get to, where's the 03 or 02 that this starts with? I think this is the 02 that starts with. It's, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this side by side to the test nine here and just kind of break it down and see what we end up with. So I'm not gonna save this. I'm not gonna save over this. All right. So six nine is one byte away from six a. So that makes sense. But right, what doesn't make sense is the seventy two here. That seems to be wrong. So we can figure out why that's wrong. But that just doesn't look right. Oops, take... Okay. So O two twenty, that makes sense. B is higher than 8, so that's why that goes there. Then we come back around to this. And then OD is lower than 8, 0, so that's why we get that there. And then right around here, we should then see our next size byte. And then our sequence string. Oh wait, something's wrong there. Uh, uh, what did I miss? No. 01. 21. Okay, I think... I may have calculated the bytes wrong. Uh, okay, I think I see what I did wrong. So I'm working in decimal, not in hexadecimal. So we need to put some of these to var end. That's the problem with this test. Oh, and I did write that file. Oops. That's okay. I added it to the stash so I can unwrite it. Okay. So what we need, six eyes. Uh, let's see. Let's sig size hex equals tx.utils.2 oops, two var int sig size. And then pubkey size hex equals tx.utils.2 var int uh, pubkey size hex. Okay. Nope, pubkey size. Alright, so then we have script size hex, sig size hex, sig hex, sig hash type, which is hex. Pub key size hex. Okay, let's take a look at that, and that should account for um, a missing byte. Okay, so now we're 69, and then 48. That's better than 72. That's a lot closer. That because before we we're looking at 6a, and I think it was 47. Okay, so let's go back into this test here. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm AJ. Just working on some hardcore stuff, you know. Just doing the hardcore. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna drop this here and I'm gonna get rid of all of this. And we're gonna start this over. So six nine makes sense. That's the, the number is at least in the right realm. 48 is in the right realm. It looks like here, 20 and 20, so we're one byte less. Here, we are 21 and 20, so we are just one byte more. So that makes perfect sense. And then we get here to this, was this the one where we're looking at 02? That's the signature. There's the sig hash type. There's the public key length. The public key length is the same between both of these. Okay. 
Okay. So, do I want O1? And these are the different parts of the signature. Okay, so I am convinced, looking at this, that these are calculated correctly. Because this sequence, by chance, is one byte less in the big int encoding. Because, again, here, the first byte of this, the R signature has two parts, R and S. The first byte of the R part of the signature is BF, which is greater than 80 which means that it gets padded with a, a zero zero padding byte for big int encoding in ASN1. And then here we don't have that. So, oh, but wait, hold on. What's a little confusing though, now that this was 47, this is 48. This is 20 and 20, that's 21 and 20. So, and then that one doesn't change, yeah. Okay, so I'm convinced that this is correct. So, great, now, we need to figure out how we're going to stick this into the transaction. Um, okay, so we go all the way back here. So, let's see. Let raw txn equals Boom. And actually, you know what? He gives, I think we can, I think we do have a test fixture because I'm pretty sure he gives the private key. We can decode the private key from the format in which he gave it and use the same private key. Okay, so let me go see if I can grab from the, thank heavens for someone like this, who went through it step by step and included all the outputs. All right, details of the unsigned transaction, and then we're gonna sign it, sign raw transaction, and they put the TXID, key, and then there we are with Okay, this looks like base 58 encoding, but that's okay. We know how to base 58 decode things. Okay, Concord Cube. What's up with the smiley faces and the roses all the time? It's kind of weird. This is a coding stream, not a dating service. But, uh... You know, yes, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm just getting a little weirded out. You know. I have a wife. I'm taken. She's right behind me. Yeah. Some, some dude is sending me roses on the chat. Well, you do have that beard. I guess. Beard admirer. Is that what it is? <laughs> I'm interested and amazed at what you are doing now. It's complicated for me, but necessary. Okay. What do you what are you doing? Why is this necessary for you? Alright, so we oh gosh. Okay, let me think. I'm just gonna look for a tool online to do this because my tools are tuned to dash and then I'd have to write a little bit of code to... Okay, so decode Bitcoin private key. Um, online. All right, never mind. I'll just have to do it. Uh, I have to change. Okay. 
Bitcoin testnet um, address byte. Address prefixes. Okay, pubkey hash. How do we have test net? No, these begin with this begins with C. Or does Bitcoin begin with C? Alright, let's see. Pubkey hash net leading symbols. Um, okay, maybe I let me let me take a look at this again. Just key dot txt. All right, that looks like I'm not sure what network that's on. Oh, you know what? I, you know what I can run though. I've got an inspect command, so we can do um, x dot whiff. And then what was it? Dash keys. Was it dash keys? I think it's dash keys. Okay, inspect. Oh. Oops. There we go. All right, let me try. I think it's griping about that just because I have something baked in here. Okay, decode. I don't want to validate it. I just want to inspect it. should get rid of that there okay i'm i'm checking out the comments uh i'm a man my brother engineer from the state of iraq i'm also one of your followers greeting to you and your wife greetings to you and your wife <laughs> he, it, two roses this time one for me one for you all right she says thank you all right well yeah I've, i mean i've seen you around before it's just I don't know what it is like in Iraq, because I'm not from that part of the world, but over here in the US, a guy using rose emojis with another guy is kind of, I think most people would take it as just being goofy. I have a buddy that I might do that with, but we know each other well, you know? So it, we would, we would get that kind of goofy humor with each other. Whereas just, you know, from a rando on the internet. Hey, no, we're having a conversation. My wife. She's got to make a big deal out of everything. Can't, can't just have a friendly conversation with, with a bloke from Iraq. Yeah. Okay, so read adder or path. Let's see if I, did I give myself any, is not a valid whiff or pay adder. That looks like something that I would put in here, but why? Dash decode, uh, decode, oh, right. Okay, so I want to decode this. Can I decode it without? All right, let me see here. Oh, whoops. Okay. Not a valid. All right. Okay. B fifty eight R E my test for that. Hmm. So it's saying that this has some characters that are not val valid 
base 58. So maybe this is base 64. Let's try that. Base 64 to hex. I really do. This is one of the... Uh, Josh, will you remind me of this? Put this in the chat for me. This is one of the utilities that we need. We need something that goes from base 64 to hex. Just a command line utility. This should be one of the projects that we do for the course. Is command line utility that goes from different formats. Here, it's got an O2 at the end, which indicates that this private key is supposed to be used compressed. So if it's a public key, the O2 or O3 or O1 or whatever it is goes at the beginning, but if it's a private key, it goes at the end. But that's weird that it was base 64. I didn't realize that I could use base 64. Um, can we go to, okay, hex to base 58 check. Okay. No, I want to go the other way around. Um, don't we have a flippy do on this? Go from hex to base 58 check. Base 58 input text. No, input as hex. Okay, so starts as two. So let me go back and look at that list. So is two testnet? Now three is testnet. Is there any two? Two. Test net script hash. Okay, great. So. Oh, wait, script hash. Ugh. That's probably not helpful. Okay, I'm, I'm just... This looks too long as well. Okay. Private key. No, this is testnet private key starts with C. Okay. Then. So this could be a testnet private key. Let me see how many, uh, what the length of this is. Dot length is 52. I think that's the right number. But this, what characters does this have that is not valid as base 58? Okay. Okay. Decode. Input base fifty eight. Treat output as hex. All right. Huh. I need. I, I'm just. I'm just gonna double check real quick because so, obviously something's wrong here. All right. Let's take a look. Can we find lowercase c? Lowercase c is there. All right. Can we find uppercase s? Uppercase s is there. Okay. Can we find lowercase f? Yes, lowercase f is there. I could probably faster write a function that does this, but okay. Uppercase l is there, and we already looked for c, and c was already there. We have lowercase m is there. Lowercase e. Our case E is there. Two, we already saw that two was there. Um, K is there. We already know S is there. P is there. K is there. Z is there. One is there. Lowercase s, five. Let's see, uppercase A, uppercase W. Uppercase eight, lowercase a, upper the two, upper k is here. All right. Um, y is there. Four and one, and p, and eight, and h, and y, 
and uppercase G and lowercase O, uppercase X, uppercase A, lowercase E, lowercase V, uppercase N, lowercase Z, uppercase P, uppercase U, lower N, lower A, six, lower I, X, D, W, nine, B, lower O, upper C. Okay. So, hmm. Begins with any of these and ends. Oh, I wonder if I didn't trim it. That might be it. B58RE test. No, it trimmed right there. Okay, console.log json.stringify. No, it, it had it. Adder or whiff is not a valid. If not, b58re. Right, console.log b58re. Why would this not work? I don't I don't understand. Okay, let's just try this real quick. Where is my error? That says it's true. I'm very confused here. It says it's not valid, but when I test it with the same test that's in the code, is valid equals I see it adder or whiff there we go that was my problem I have to bug fix that make a PR for that I'm gonna have to do, ah, got so many of these things to go through towards the end um, Okay, and with the decode, we should be able to get around this problem. Dash decode. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I'm going to check that out. I'm going to go a little bit lower into this. So, hmm, I need an option to pass through here, basically not to verify this. We'll verify. That makes sense. do skip verify for inspect so just for the sake of running this and seeing that I get the same results I'm going to comment that out for the moment
let me go ahead and run that on safe. Okay, so is this the same output that we were getting over here? Hmm, no. Oh, but this has the header info and stuff in it. So let me let me copy this here and echo this. Okay, because this has a version EF, that makes sense. Starts with 97 all the way to 20E8. So if we go to 20E8, we're good there. Then indicates that it's supposed to be used with compressed keys. And then we've got the checksum. Okay, so decoding works. Uh, we're getting the right answer for both of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that is our private key. And... Let's see. So we need a, we need a base 58 encoder decoder, a base 58 check encoder decoder, which kind of have that. Um, we need it, we, yeah, we need more, we need command line tools that goes, go between formats like these online tools that are just as easy as Webby. Okay, so tx.test. Well, this is awesome because now I can test. Priv key is not just going to be some rando key, but we're going to use this as our private key. All right. And so, fingers crossed we should get the exact same SIG script that they got. Let's check and see if we do. Okay. Oh, did I not? Oh, there it is. SIG script is right there. Okay, so... Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I'm a little bit confused by that. I am calculating something wrong. Because this should be... If this number's higher, then that number should be higher. So I'm at least off by one. I think I'm off by two. Because those, these should be exactly the same now. Um, so let's take a look at that and figure it out. Snortling. Snorting plus chortling? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. I have the words. You know, we just make them up as we go. You know how I feel about that. Making up words, it's the best thing, right? Okay, so... Somewhere, we've got to be off by a bite. Oh, it's because of this. Where's sig script size hex? Okay. So now I remember. Sig script dot length sig script hex dot length divided by two. This one. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Ryan's Ryan's live on the stream, and we got some other people. Hello. Agnes is too busy to say hello. Hi. All right. So we got the sig size. Sig size hex, sig hex, sig hash type. But I was wrong about the sig size. Sig size does not include sig hash type. All right. So then,
Sig script size is this. Okay. So now my calculations should be correct, but now it's 6B. Huh. So again, we're off by just a touch, but let me go take a look at these. So now it's saying 6B, so now I have one byte extra. One byte too many. But let's see if these all match up now. Uh, so now I've got 30, 45, that doesn't make sense. Because we didn't change the type of signature. Uh, this is not right. Something, something's wrong here. Um, okay. 20. 20. Hmm. It could be I'm signing the wrong thing. I gotta go look at my notes again. Alright, so 0121, and then part of the public key, 0220, 0220. So this one is not, we don't have the right public key for this private key. I might need to take a look at those options and see if we put out the public key in yet a different format. But also, I'm confused as to why this is 3045. And that could be it. That could be because it's a different type. I think something's wrong there. And then 47 and then 6B. But we shouldn't be getting 6B because we have the exact same number of bytes. Right? Let's just take a look here. Okay, same number of bytes on the public key itself. Same number of bytes in the link, same number of bytes in the sig hash type, same number of bytes in the S value. Uh, one more byte on the R value. So that's what's making up the extra byte. So that actually should have been 48. So this was correct before. Because we got one more byte in the R value and then we are accounting for, okay. So back up, I actually did have it right before. The SIG size is with SIG hash type dot length divided by two. Okay. Okay, so the problem is that if that is the right private key, we are getting a different, definitely a different signature, and I think we're also getting a different public key. Why would we be getting a different public key? Is it because, because this is public key, is compressed is true, so if we're getting a public key from the private key and we're using the same private key, um, should this be prefixed with the, what did we have before? Before we had the random uh, console.log. Okay. Let's try U8 to hex. Cause I think previously, I think the, the private key was actually one byte longer because we were describing the byte as being for a compressed public key, or de describing the private key. I think that we did have an extra byte in here. So let me, let me check and see when we do the random private key, if we have that extra byte or not consistently, because we'll see it, because it'll be either be an 0, 01, 02, 03, 04, at either the beginning or the end. So PK, 
Are we... No. Alright, so that. Just watching the last bite there. Watching the first bite here. Yeah, sometimes we're getting an 01 on either side, but it's random. It's not part of the key. Alright, let me make sure again that we've got the right size here. Sizes are correct. Okay, and let's make sure that I actually did uh, grab the right bytes of the key. So it starts in 97 and it ends in E8. I'm pretty sure I got all the right bytes there. Starts in 97, ends in E8. Okay, and then hex to U8. This is priv key hex for sure. All right, we can sign, get public key, priv key is compressed. All right, let me go check in this original here and make sure that I've got the right information. Oh, you know what? Uh, no, I think I've got the right information there. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. There's the script sig. All right. Let me just send raw transaction, fetch it one more for the sake of the data, which includes script hub key. Okay. Let's just see. There's the hex of the SIG script, which has the 47. And then this is 44, not 45. Why would it be 45? That just seems weird. It seems like it's the wrong type. But maybe again, this, this could be the difference between the public key. Maybe in this case, we don't need the pub key to be compressed. Let me try it without the pub key compressed and just see what happens. So let's try to turn this to false. And then see if the output looks more like the original. 8B48. That actually looks further off. And that makes sense because the pub key is now significantly longer. So pub key probably starts right around, let's see, 01. No, that's not it. There's gonna be, There's the signature's gonna end, so the signature goes to here. Signature's probably gonna go right around somewhere in this area. And then we should see an 01 for the sig hash type. And then immediately after that, the key should start with uh, probably an 04. Let's see, do we have an 01 here? I'm just curious. Okay, there's an, there's the 01. So 01. That should be the end of the signature, and then this whole thing here is the public key. And I would suspect that we would see another part for it. Whatever. Okay, that's not right. All right, let me break down this byte sequence here. So the 6B, that's wrong. All right, 4, 7, 30, 44, and that's the ASN1 type, so I don't know how we could have gotten a 3045 there. That just... No, that's the length. That's the length. That's why we got a 45, because that's the length encoded. No, so that makes perfect sense. Like 20. But this is not the pub key to that private key. It could be that the example that he put out um, doesn't match that, or it could be maybe I grabbed something wrong. Send raw transaction. Oh, and that actually that script sig might be might be different. Okay. Seven six. Uh, script hub key. Okay. The hex of the raw transaction. Why do we just sign the transaction? Also required. All right. Let's look again. Decode raw transaction. I'm not really worried about the decode. Create raw transaction. Decode raw transaction. I'm looking for the sign. 
sign raw transaction Okay, I want to take a look at this because he's showing it as if he's doing these one after the other. And I don't remember exactly where I copied this from, so I'm just going to break it down again. Because we should get the exact same thing back. So, let's see. What was it again? Version is four bytes, then number of inputs. One, two, three, four, number of inputs. Then... It is TXID until the zero zeros. And then one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four. And then script size. Yeah, so if this is correct, I'm just getting a different value for public key than he's getting. And I don't know why that would be. Kind of concerns me. that one and then this should end right there wait a minute if that was oh no That's better. 012102. All right, the public key is going to go one byte over, and then we get the sequence. Okay. So again, don't worry about the signature. Just worry about the public key. I was looking at the signature. I need to be looking at the public key. So is this public key 0244? Five one. Does that match? Okay, it does not. Hmm. Oh wait, this one matches. Okay, what did I do different between these two? 6B, 6A, and 6A. That looks like I just put in two copies of the 6A. All right, I'm confused. Hmm. Alright, let me let me see if I can use another tool. Um, Bitcoin private key to pay address. I could probably comment out some stuff in my dash keys and make it work. Let's just do an encode. Uh, let's see. Okay, if I was gonna. Let's see what I've got here. 
so I have an inspect function. What else do I have? Do I have, well, I've got a generate an address. All right, let me change, let me go back to this online tool here. And we're gonna change this. Um, know that this tool has worked before um, let's see is compressed true okay let's let's get back to this let's get back to this because I think what I may have done is I may have changed I changed that to uncompressed and I messed up some stuff so let me change this back all right and then let me look at this again and see if where the public key starts if the public key looks right. So public key, okay, there's 20, uh, Where was that other public key? Okay, so the public key comes to somewhere around here. 03. 0121. Okay, so my question is, all right, let me go back to compressed false again. This one. So here's uncompressed. And the first part of the key is the same. So that's the difference. It's just giving, it's whether it's giving. The compressed value or the uncompressed value. And this one is in 6A, this one is in 6A. Okay, so let me check again. Okay, so I think, let's see, is this right? No, this is FC. Hmm. So something, I think something's wrong with, well, as I've said already, something's wrong with the public key. What's wrong with the public key? Get public key, priv key. Could be that this person is showing just wrong information. Send the transaction. Sign the transaction. Send the transaction. Try to pop this out one more time. One, two, three, four. Input number, TXID. One, two, three, 
or length. Oops. Our value. S value. Public key size. Sequence. Outputs. Length. Oh, wait. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if this was the input and that's the output, then that is the public key. Why am I getting the wrong public key? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna move on from this because I don't understand it right now. So I'm just. I'm just gonna move on. Let me get the format correct. Format's pretty much there, and then we'll go back and we'll figure out what is tweaked about the public key later. There was some, let me go, there was some note about compatibility on that documentation page. Options, private key, whether the recovered bit should be included in the result. In this case, the result would be an array of two items. Whether the signature S should be no more than half prime order. True default makes it compatible. Lib sec p two fifty six k one false makes it compatible with open SSL. But this is the sign function, right? Yeah, that's the sign function, which I'm not really worried about. Okay, strict, whether S should be no more than, yeah. And again, this is a verify function. Recover public key. Okay, get public key. I've used this with dash addresses, so I know that it works because I've been able to send transactions. That's what the other stuff is using. Get public key. All right. Point dot from private key. I don't know. It's possible. Okay, here's here's another thing. It is possible that that example is just so old that it is using a different key format. Another reason I should just go forward from this point. But dang it, I really just wanted something that I can compare against and know that I get the right value. And I think that I should be able to do that. <sighs> okay, well, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I should do? I, I hate opening up dash core because of how long it takes, but in this instance, I should open up dash core. Uh, oh, I can't because I am, uh, that's not going to work. I don't have my external drive that has the blockchain sync. So if I do open it up, it's just going to sync forever. So maybe I'll do that tonight. I don't have enough room left on here. I don't have 40 gigs spare because I'm recording video and stuff. Hmm. I might be able to use it without it syncing. Anyway, all right, carry on, carry on. 
Okay, SIG script. So SIG script size, we can actually put that separate. Okay, so here are the inputs. Raw TXN. So inputs. Sig script equals sig script hex. Oh, and then I need to say the previous index as well, or signature. Oh, I need the signature and the public key and the sig hash type. Okay, so signature equals um, sig hex. So this already should be good. So I should be able to to verify between these two things that they both generate the right output. Okay, so we should have signature and then public key and then what else? Sig hash type. And then this should be enough to sign it. Oh, I see some, oh, was there comments? No, there's no comments. All right, so now I should be able to create a signed raw TX in. Key hex is not found. Where did pub key go? Pub hex. All right. Dash keys, Priv buff, Get public key from Priv buff. Hex to U eight. To private key. Mm. Okay. So here is my signed transaction. Let's see if I can break that down.
Okay. So, um, what I should see, what I'm expecting to see, is that this signature script should exist perfectly inside of this signed TX, which that seems... Hmm. That seems like it's a huge chunk of it. It'd be the bulk of it, almost. Well, not almost. Really. Alright, 8B is the right size. Oh, this is wrong again. Let me... Um, I changed that back to false. Let's change that back to true. Okay. So here we are. Alright, that size looks a little bit more reasonable. And then we should see that it ends in DA6A. Well, I guess I could just copy this whole thing. And the idea would be we should see a 6B, and then we should see that entire thing. Okay, good. So verified that it is working. So at this point, I could just broadcast a transaction. What do you think? Do it? So what I need then, do we have a couple of keys to work with here? Got all this test stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna go... I think I do have, do I have another whiff here? Just that one. Oh, okay, so I got some... I've got some keys right here, it looks like. Address. Source with, let's see if this one has any money on it still. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, we can... All right, we, we do have something that we can work with at this point. Okay, let's check and see if the source address still has any monenes on it. In fact, actually, let me try my little command line utility here. I think this will work. Dash site. Okay, npm install dash g dash site. Ba -da -da -da. All right, so that's good. That tool is not useless, thank goodness. This is where I document whenever I make a change to my system. When I when something that requires sudo, I uh, track it in there. I needed to move an FFmpeg library. Of course, it still didn't work. But okay, so this. All right, do we have test dot two? What was this?
Alright, so this should result in a broadcastable transaction. So we have one. I totally forgot about this. I got derailed on that, um, the Bitcoin stuff, and I, I forgot that we already have a way to construct a transaction right here. So let's get back on target. Here is this test test.txt. We so this should be one, two. A real live broadcastable transaction. Um, sequence. Shouldn't it be FF? No, 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 no this is right. Um, all right, six B four eight three five. It's starting to look a little more familiar. Um, and then where we were gonna find this one. Okay, this one here. And then we should have the exact same number. Okay, yep, minus one, 21, all the way up to the FFs, then uh, zero, one, this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That doesn't seem like that cut quite right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Oh, because it's supposed to cut this way. All right, this is the number of outputs and this is the address this is the length and this is the address that it goes to okay cool so here's that transaction broken down so if I use that same private key which we will get at by doing an inspect here so let's do that same inspect except I'm going to use from this test file here, I'm going to use this source with. So I'll have source dot with, all right. And then dash keys, inspect, source dot with, oops, let's put that to unsafe. All right, so here's a private key. So let's put that in our tx.test up. Whatever, whatever. Let priv key hex equals. And if not mistaken, it's generating public keys the same way over there. Okay, so signature script, signed TX. So I should be able to run this. Um, oh, actually I'm gonna have to change some values here. So let's do, from this, oh, the pay adder, source adder. I don't, do we even need the source adder? I don't think we need the source adder anywhere. Yeah, we don't actually need the source adder. So if we go to so target dot adder dash keys inspect target dot adder that should give us ah put key hash that we need right there. So when we do tx dot test, um, we're gonna swap out few items here. We're going to swap out several items. Mm. All right, that's BTC raw in. BTC expected raw TX. BTC raw in. BTC expected raw TX. And then let's see, BTC results, 
BTC result, BTC result. Hey everybody, how's it going? Feel free to strike up some conversation. It's a uh, lonely coding tonight. All right. So I want to do the same thing, but instead of doing it this way, and I don't know what the I don't know what the expected values are here. TXN. So we dash raw TXN and then the pub key hash. The number of characters shouldn't change. Can do that. Test.js. Um, unspent amount, pay amount, fee amount. So units is that, and then we need the TX ID uh, from this one, and then the output index is also zero. TX. So we're going to do dash result from the dash TXN that I already have test for. I'm going to do dash result. We've got the same sig hash type. So our signable TX. It's going to be this one. All right, so there we are. That's going to be our signable. This private key I took from the other file. And now, signature. Uh, by the way, Ryan, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this was part of my confusion with thinking that um, the public key was embedded in the signature because the public key is embedded in a Bitcoin slash Dash transaction signature. And so what I was seeing is that when I was working at a different layer of this, what I was seeing was that if all you had was the pub key hash, from what I saw, because I only saw the pub key hash in terms of the inputs and outputs that I was putting in, that it could determine that, that it could it could verify uh, the signature with the pub key hash. But that's because the signature that it had in the transaction was the combination of the signature and the public key together, concatenated together. And so what it could do is it could take the signature and it could convert that to the pub key hash, which let it know that the pub key hash was correct. And then it could take the pub key hash and, or then it could take the signature to verify, to take the public key to verify the signature. So it would know that this, excuse me, this address, that public key, that signature. So I think that's, that's why I get confused, because previously I did know that it is the public key. When you use the public key to encrypt data, you get a signature. When you use the private key to, um, no, when you use the private key to encrypt data, you get a signature. When you use the public key to encrypt data, you get something that can only be decrypted by the private key. So the public key and the, tra the, the private key both act as trapdoors. When you encrypt with the private key, it's called signing when you, in, well, when you do the math function, let's just say it that way. When you do the math function with the private key, it's called 
what's called signing. When you do the math function with the public key, it's called encryption. And no matter which one you use, the trap door is the other. So the trap door for decrypting uh, private key encrypted data is the public key, the trap door for public key encrypted data is the private key and it's desired that you can retrieve the hash with the public key so that lets you know that it was the private key that encrypted it otherwise known as signed it okay all right so with this TXN is not defined. Okay. Um, I think this is going to be dash raw, dash raw, dash raw, dash raw. Okay. Oh, and then of course we need to bump the version on the dash raw. This should be version three, not version one. But the other inputs I think are the same. So I'm going to pull this apart independently of what I had with uh, test.txt. I just pulled that one apart. Test.check.txt. And we should see one input. There's the transaction ID for it. Um, there's the sequence number. There's the size. There's the R value. There's the S value. Oops. Let me go ahead and put that down. And there's the key. So what I'm looking for, okay, 48, 45, I just take this indentation, make the indentations match, and then diff the files. But I'm actually kind of hopeful that I got this one right. So it may have been something about the difference in the version, or I don't know, some other thing. Okay, so 6B should be brought back here. Um, and then FFF, and then 01. FFF and 01 explode that 19 all that bring that um, to a close there that one actually should be adjusted in the other one okay so let's do a diff between the two but i think this is going to be good news i think we have successfully recreated no okay so what's different here? Um, okay, one of these wasn't broken down all the way because that number is just too long. Okay, let me look at this again. All right, so there's the prior transaction. That's all broken down nicely. It's got the padding. Okay, maybe I can just put that down, put that down. A one. That's the whole thing. Oh, no. 
talks about, right? Let's see. Are we 20 lines over here? Oh, no. No, 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 no. All right, so what happened over here then? Was I did what? I forgot to split out the part with the public key. So that should be what? Uh, 01, there we go. 2103. Wait, is it 2103? Alright, that's. 03. Okay, now let's diff them. We're still getting some differences. Zero zero E C zero zero B E. Okay, let's see. Zero zero E C. Okay, signature values are different. That's not too crazy. Forty two forty. Let's see, what was forty two forty? No. Uh, forty two forty. Did I break this down wrong? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. And then. most obnoxious thing is are the private or the public keys the same so public key is this part here 0375 ends in CB Three. Ah, no, the public keys are different. All right. I'm very confused as how we have a difference in public keys. I think... I'm, I'm wondering if I'm putting in the right bytes. Well, let's check the private keys. Let's make sure the private keys are going in the wrong format, on, or the right format on both sides. Okay. So, what can I check on this one? I mean, the good news is, uh, well, I'm a, I'm a little confused because I have been using, let me, let me just double check on this. Oops. So in dash keys, dash keys I have used to send money back and forth. And I'm using no crypto. Public key. Hmm. Let me just look at this again. Get public key. The thing that was wrong before was that I wasn't using the compressed key, but now I am using the compressed key. So, there's a pub buff, public key, key hash. I, I wonder what it could be. Hmm. Somebody tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'm getting the wrong public key, which means that I'm doing something wrong to the private key. Or the public key. I'm doing something wrong to one of those two. There's the private key hex. Uh, let's just, you know, do sanity check here. Source with. Oops. Alright. D4 to 4-6. D4 to 46. That is the private key hex. 
Uh, let's just double check. Hex two U eight. Let's make sure console.log priv key. Um, let's uh, do a sanity check here. Uh, parse int D four as sixteen. Does that give us 212? That gives us 212. All right. Ooh. Ooh. I don't think this ends in zero. Uh-oh. That, my friends, may be our ticket. What's up? Dinner? So earlier, I was messing around in that function, 178, and I changed the order of something from reverse E to forward Z or something like that. And I think what I did is I don't have it copying the last byte in some sort of situation. So, Man, off by one errors, it got got me so good yesterday, and it get me so good uh, just this past week. Just a little tiny off by one errors. Man, they get you. Okay. Um, so hex two u eight buff length if greater than or equal to last index. Last index. Hmm. I already put. The minus two, I don't need to put the equals. All right, things are going to start to make a whole lot more sense, y'all. Oh, all right, let's break it down. One more time. Oops, then test.check. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four. All right. That is number of inputs. That's hex ID. Then we have, we should have 6B, 345, 21. We'll bring this out. And then we're going to see 0220 right there. They're just going to give us key that I mean our s value and then we're gonna see a one two which is going to be let's see um, some other value and this time ah, that key looks right <sighs> sequence number number of inputs Explode these eight bytes. Size, lock time. I think that's it. So this is all good. To that one, that's good. And then the this is the key value. That's all good. That's the S value. Um, wait, that doesn't look right. I split that wrong. Didn't I? Did I split that wrong? Yeah, I did. I split that wrong. That wasn't supposed to be split. Okay, um, all the same. All right, RNS values, they're indented properly. That's indented properly. Okay, now I'm expecting that this will be the same. And if we go back and we do the Bitcoin one, we should see that the public key is right. So the reason the public key wasn't right was because the private key was off by one byte because I changed the sign of a thing and blah, 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 blah. 
<sighs> or the... I switched a condition from being greater than to less than, and then I flippy dude it. And... All right. So. I don't have the energy to give the triumph that this deserves right now. Uh, but. Everything is the same except for the signature, and it's okay that the signature is different. Um, maybe. Um, the reason that it could be okay that the signature is different is that the signature might be different. Because it might be using a different initialization value between the two of them. But I think most likely it's different because the signature is wrong. Because I don't have... Um, something that I can easily confirm against. Okay, so we're going to add test.js here, test.txt, and test.check.txt. We're going to add all of these to the stash just so that I have them. Um, we're going to add tx.js. We're going to add shims. We got a whole bunch of things. Um, we're going to add tx.test. But we should go back and we should kind of repeat this whole thing with um, with the Bitcoin bits. So I, I think the reason that we've got the wrong signature, or, or a different signature, I think the reason is that the signature is wrong. I think that, um, well, let's see, at this point, okay, so the next, the next step for this is going to be to take a look at this transaction again, and I don't think, let's see if we have the exploded, does it give the TXID on the decode raw transaction? TXID, it does. So I think the next thing is going to be first just a little just a little bit of uh, cleanup and rerun this the Bitcoin test, and then see if we have the same transaction ID if if we did the right hashing because if we did the right hashing, then we should end up with the correct TX ID for this because the TX ID for this is E8 and then ending in FF and the TX ID for the final one should be completely different yeah so TX ID for this one is D1 and 92. So it's calling this the TXID, but this is actually the the input signing hash. All right. So with that, thanks for joining in. We'll go ahead and do a quick uh, raid here. Let me go ahead and find somebody to raid. Uh, let's see who's on. I'm on. Uh, we got Live Data Bank and we got CM Griffling. CM Griffling is doing some TypeScript and mitosis. Now that's actually kind of interesting. Uh, and then Large Data Bank is doing Cockroach DB. Um, so, thoughts? Vote? I'm just going to start typing one in. Uh, what? CM Griffing. I'm coming soon. I'm, I'm signing off. Griffing. Okay, Raid's going to CM Griffing. Uh, like, sub, follow if you want to, and check out the Discord if you want to, and I will maybe catch y'all in a few hours if you're still on. So with that, uh, raid is starting. Catch you later. Adios.